Imagine Navi playing from behind and Stars decides that Super Barbarians are what he wants to try to turn the tides with. Imagine. With the offensive boost of the update, making Town Hall 15 a little bit easier than it was before, we are going to have a lot more freedom to break out a lot of weird strategies. And right out of the gate here, we have Gaku breaking out a Queen Charge into Mass Super Barbarians. His super troop, other than the Barbarian selected here, is the Goblins. And he looks like he did not opt to use any power potions or any hero potions. They're going to save those for their big tournament wars there when they face some of the toughest opponents that uh, you got to make sure that you have every advantage that you can get against those because since the update just came out yesterday, we want to make sure that we save those <laughs> very, very useful things for the toughest matchups. But it looks like he's able to get his heroes to move to the top of the base there above the Queen Charge. Royal Champion King and the Warden deployed up there with the Warden ability used very early. Meaning he's not going to have a backup method for the Town Hall takedown other than the Queen breaching. So you get to see the higher level hero or at least the higher level Queen in this case try to charge across the entirety of the base here. But he does need to make it past the defensive monolith here. And that thing hits very, very hard. That goes his Royal Champion. He can reach the model from the compartments that are open there, but the Warden has now transferred over and will support the Queen here. But if he takes the healers and the Queen is going to be in trouble, and he has, he stole the healers! This is bad! This is really bad! Garku can end with a one star if he's not careful. He freezes the Town Hall and the Expo, and the Warden is taking the other Expo. Come on, Warden, what are you doing? Why did you steal the healers, Warden? I can't even see his HP bar! Okay, now I can. I thought, was, I thought his HP was hiding behind. Chazmat Gaming there, but he freezes again. He's trying to reduce some of the damage, and he's able to salvage the two-star. Very, very close to having that warden throw the attack there as he swoops in, takes the healers right off of that queen, and almost results in a disaster out of the gate here. <laughs> oh, that was that was dangerous. That was very, very dangerous. But he's okay. He'll use the remaining Super Barbarians to gather some percentage. He definitely needs his Queen to survive through that and assist into the backside of the base there. But he's not going to have that luxury. It'll climb up to the 90s, and that's pretty solid considering. But it is a defense, and that means that Chazmat Gaming could potentially pull a lead here to start off this war. Imper obviously picked up some packs there. Or he had a massive stockpile of magic items because he has his Warden and Queen already maxed out here on day two of the update after they both got five new levels. In fact, all the heroes did, but his King and his World Champion are going to be lower priority. The Warden, because he boosts the, the time of the board ability, is going to be very valuable. And the, I guess that would probably also boost the amount of, of HP gain from the troops nearby him. But the Queen obviously wants the extra HP and the extra damage output that is accompanied with those extra five levels and more damage out of her ability as well. On top of more Archer spawn. Obviously, extra levels on heroes have a big, big impact on a lot of their attacks. But he does take out the defensive row champion and the scatter shot down south there, taking Eagle Artillery Strikes there to his Queen. She's gone. Okay, well. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem because. If you guys haven't heard, safe blimps on the town hall no longer work. So that means that he not only needs to gather enough percentage to be able to get the town hall to activate right now, but he also needs to obviously secure the town hall takedown, but make it past that invisibility tower as well. And there's a sweeper facing it. He puts in a slammer from the side of the base there, and he will begin his path through, but. Obviously, he was expecting the Queen to take out a lot more of the base there. Oh, look at that. Oh, I haven't seen the new level of the Stone Slammer yet. Looks really cool. <laughs> they had spikes to the side. Everything looks better when you put spikes on the side of it, right? It's so much more intimidating now. But <laughs> he does need to secure, secure the tower takedown. His Lava Hound just popped there and immediately, before the pups even spread, got hit by a red air bomb and lost them all. But he does use this right there. There's the ward ability. And he's able to one-shot the Town Hall and 
the invisibility tower is not able to stop it. Very, very close to a one star right there. But it is gonna safely go to a two star. You'll climb it into the 70s, potentially the 80s here. And it does look like Navi will start this war with the lead. All right, nice try. Does this get to the 80s? I think it does actually. Got a little bit working up top here. A little bit working down south. Eagle Artillery chipping away there with its new level. Scattershot chipping away with its new level. But against all the light troops there, that's kind of a mute point. But there we go. Pick up the storage up top there. Pick up another storage on the left side. And now everything else will die out. It is an 82%. But at least it's not a one star. Could have gone a lot worse there. <laughs> if that played out even slightly differently. Who expected two misses out of the gate? But even more so... Who expected a golem avalanche from Morio? All right, here we go. <laughs> we have three golems. Pekka's, the new level of healers. But he is running the old level of Pekka's? Okay. <laughs> he has the new level of healers here. But he runs the old level of Pekka's. And wait, was the Yeti? The Yeti also is max level six now, right? So he's gonna run a lower level Yeti, a lower level P.E.K.K.A. He did not pop a Hero Potion. He did not pop a Power Potion here. So he's just gonna have to run the underleveled non max troops. Just fine. Because he still has a level 65 Warden. You can see that Morio has prioritized the Warden upgrading over the Queen. And I've seen people go both directions with that. I've seen people upgrade their queen first and go for the big queen charges. But the overall benefit of the warden boosting every troop nearby him is going to sway his decision. But either way, no matter how you do it, between the two of those troops, between the two of those heroes, you want to make sure that they go up there before the others. Because, for example, the world champion ability doesn't have the ability to take out any defense that it wasn't able to already take out before at level 35. So, obviously that sets it down to the priority. But the Golem Avalanche, wrapping towards the Town Hall, just go to the outside of the base there. The King will pop his ability there. The same time he pops the board ability to charge into the Molten Inferno. He freezes the defenses beyond the Town Hall there. And his healers are getting targeted, but the Queen hopefully doesn't get distracted off of these Ground Skellies. Okay, she got the Inferno down before she got distracted over the Ground Skellies, and he's okay. He's doing fantastic here. But he does put out a golem on the right side of the base there. Continuing to just cascade them in with more wizards. Where champion has now been deployed for the top of the base there. Guys, this is working. This is absolutely not just working, but his base is crushed. He threw an extra golem in the top of the base there. To work with the road champion as well. And I think I counted four golems there. I think I did count four golems. I think he had an extra one inside of his flame flinger. No, he didn't. Okay, he just had three. Why did it feel like he had four golems there? No, he had hogs inside of his flame flinger to assist over there. But it's a triple for Navi, and that will sustain their lead. As my gaming playing from behind now, will send in a warden walk into Electro Titan Smash. Now, other than the healers, and all of his heroes are max. Whoa, look at this, <laughs> Mech. No wonder he's number one on the war list here. Literally, the update came out yesterday. And Mech already has, without using a hero potion, all max level heroes. Okay. <laughs> he probably used Code Eric. <laughs> he, he probably used Code Eric. And he picked up all the packs in the shop there. And then went on a, a gem spending spree on top of that, you know? <laughs> That's all the explanation I have there. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a rarity. I think everybody had a lot of uh, stockpile of magic items here. Because most people just stack up, uh, max out their raid medals. And they stockpile a whole bunch of magic items. But I don't know that you could even potentially carry enough magic items without buying every single pack all the way through. Since the last update. And then, because remember when you buy a pack there and you already have max items in your inventory that you can overflow the gap, or you can over you can overflow that cap if you are buying packs. That's the only way to do it. You can't just collect them from like in-game rewards like that. 
So these players are able to stockpile far beyond and be able to do exactly what we're seeing here with max level heroes without a hero potion. However, that's not saving his Electro Titans from wandering off to the right there. Illus is staying with the Queen, but Ice Golems are coming out of his Log Launcher there and will maybe support the Queen as she makes her way forward. And I, I mean, it feels like... It feels like he is struggling on this attack here, even though he did kind of wail out, to be real. <laughs> He'll freeze up the Monolith. That's the last of his freezes. He has a skeleton spell to pick up the tanking after that. So keep that Monolith at bay here and maybe hold on to his Queen ability. Now the walls are very, very weakened up over here, so maybe he can just attack the walls there and get through and get the Town Hall taken down there with the Queen ability, but... Like he's gonna go to Queen Ability very much earlier than that. The healers are taking damage from the poison. There's Red Air Bomb's gonna weaken up even more. The Queen does reach everything that she can reach, and she's leaving. Okay, maybe that's a good thing though. If he can secure the Town Hall, because now the Queen's moved over into a lower damage area. The Royal Champion will step in. She has the Diggy. Diggy will get the stun. King and Royal Champion step in. Queen's still alive. This actually has survived a lot further. Okay, maybe those new hero levels are having a big impact on this. He's actually going to end this at a time fail by the looks of it. <laughs> okay. Well, nice queen, by the way. <laughs> Most popular player in the world in a show match. You can't ask for more than that. He's brought eight bat spells, the new level of hog riders, super barbarians, balloons, and breaking out one of the first uses of the new apprentice warden. It is Klaus. I'll see what we can do with it. Dropping in the blimp to wipe out the scattershot on the right side of the base there using the warden with i mean <laughs> i guess this is where the apprentice warden is going to shine here because he uses his regular warden to protect balloons and they were trying to go after the multi inferno but he misses it and he misses the defensive world champion and he misses the scattershot so cloud gonna be a little bit of a bind here he did get the funnel form he'll draw the cc over and he can find off with his queen but I am a little bit concerned about his chances right now. Seeing as this is a bat attack here. Well, bats and hogs, right? Uh, <laughs> you gotta get the splash damage dealt with, though. And he could obviously go in and take the final shot in the defensive world champion. He could deal with her relatively simply. But we need to get these hog riders to go in after the targets that he missed. He Did he sneak in a headhunter? He didn't, but his queen can reach over the wall there, potentially, and take the final strike. The bats are starting in now? Wait a second. <laughs> He's using his bats at the start of the tech? I expected the bats to come in on the far backside, but they're just going to sail past the town hall. Oh, but they just like a scatter shot hit. That hurts. And the artillery is activated. Okay, well. That sets up the queen to go secure the town hall. Can't imagine you want to spend eight spells on that, though. And the Queen doesn't even really have enough push to take the Town Hall here. I feel like he needs to go to a backup method to go secure it. Because, oh no, okay, well. Uh, this is not going the way that Klaus would have envisioned it. <laughs> yep, yep, he needed more value out of the balloons up at the top corner. And as a result, he got his bats wrecked there. That one scatter shot hit, but also the Eagle Artillery strikes. The artillery targeting bats because he didn't have any other distraction. Also laid waste to that pack. And now he can send in his hog riders and he'll put the apprentice warden with his world champion in the hogs. He'll stick beyond or stick with them and boost their HP. Obviously he doesn't have a warden ability, so got that queen down either. Something's going wrong here. Eddie Bomb missed the queen. Headhunters missed the world champion. Missed so many major defenses. It is going to be a big, big miss here, guys. And that's going to give Chaz Mac Game a chance to make a comeback in this war. The result of this attack can go two different ways. Either they triple and they tie the stars and are ahead on percentage. Or they're going to be behind the stars regardless. But they need to make this happen. This is their chance to pull ahead of Navi in this war. And we open up with a super minion bomb. He cloned it, so lots of extra firepower there. Able to take out the scatter shot, got out the multi inferno, got out the eagle artillery, put some damage on the defensive warden, almost takes the warden down, and now that up for the super dragons to enter it. He's created a lane 
right over here to drive the Super Dragons directly at the Town Hall. There's one Sweeper facing that direction. But he will come in almost behind it. But he puts in one Super Dragon to clear out the trash at the bottom of the base here. But he'll just stay away from the Monolith. He'll stay away from the Defensive Warden. And you'll see... With that Skeleton spell, he could probably push his heroes in to go deal with the Monolith. And the Defensive King. And the Warden, for that matter. He can take it all out right there. The Warden will deploy with the Super Dragons. And we'll see what this new level of Dragons is capable of here. They need this one to happen. They need this to work. I think a lot of people are curious to see how strong Super Dragons are going to be with the new level that they just got. 10 now. Into the Town Hall area we go. There's the Ward ability. Up at the top of the base here, we have an Ice Golem coming with the King and the Queen. Not going into the Monolith first. Just going to try to go after that air defense on the other side of the Town Hall to try to reduce the damage for the Super Dragons to maybe force them into some more valuable targets throughout the middle of the base here. But he does have a Super Dragon lock under the CC. If there's any troops inside of it still, they are going down with it. Okay. New Super Dragons still stand. Like he was able to get the... Electric Owl to take the Black Air Bombs that went off by the Super Dragons, so that was a lucky break. Skeleton Spell has deployed over the right side of the base there, locking out the Defense Queen and the Scatter Shot over there, and a couple of those ground defenses to try to expose the Cannon. The War Champion will slip through here. The Queen goes to the inside path. There's one Super Dragon goes in deep to the core of the base there. We'll lock on the multi floor take the damage off of the Queen's flank. Still looking good here, but still some heavy, heavy threats on the backside. It's difficult defenses to get through with this attack, or what is closing on. Yo, freeze up that defensive king there twice. Headhunters are deployed. The king has his barbarians. He has the face. He still has the world champion ability. He'll pop the RC ability now. That finishes out the warden. And that will do the trick there because he not only has it, but he has a swag queen ability. And he tosses a freeze in the corner. That's cold right there. And that's a lead now for Chaz Mac Gaming. Imagine Navi playing from behind. And Stars decides that Super Barbarians are what he wants to try to turn the tides with. Imagine. He's gonna zap out the Monolith, the Scattershot, and the Expo. Oh, no, wait. There was no Scattershot there. It was, uh, it was Monolith, Expo, and Multi, I mean. But he missed the Rage Tower. I don't know how he missed the Rage Tower. Not weird. <laughs> but I guess it's fine. Hopefully. Because the Queen's gonna make her way that direction, and she's level 90. Newest level, gonna boost her damage output, but also her HP. And the extra healing output of the new level of healers is also gonna boon any ground attack, because most ground attacks use healers. Or golems, as we saw earlier. So... You think we should get a new level to Golems? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but either way, he's moving through very, very smooth so far. Takes the Eagle Artillery down very early in the deck there. Always very important. But look how far away the Town Hall is. And it's not really reachable easily from the outside. So I feel like he's trying to charge the entire base. Cross from the very bottom corner. Loop to the left. And then circle all the way through the base here and try to secure the Town Takedown. A very, very ambitious charge, and every single spell that he had available for his attack here, he's gonna have to invest it into the Queen Charge. But luckily, that's the strength of Super Barbarians. They come outraged, and they can sweep out everything around the perimeter base there, and most importantly, they can provide tanking for the World Champion wherever she decides to come in. But the King deploys down south, and he has a wall break. The defensive Queen, and her pad is against the wall there, so. When she's, uh, when her pad's against the wall there, she is almost guaranteed to jump the wall to go meet the king. So he's able to power through without any difficulty there. The queen steps in the single inferno now, needs to burn freezes. He still has her ability. She's still hanging in very, very strong right now. Her champion cuts across the middle of the base, and she's going to loop over the right here. And the king will be out there to provide tanking for her upon arrival. 
but up top he starts to drop in super barbarians notice how the super barbarians are coming after any perimeter reachable defenses around the base there but he does need to get the defensive king under control there he needs to get headhunters down but he pops the ward ability to go support the world champion she makes her way forward there the queen secures the town hall the expos go down king takes one queen takes the other and he's got a swag round champion ability and more super barbarians that he can throw down wherever he wants to on cleanup it's a triple for Navi, that was brilliant. What a queen charge. That is skill. That is absolute epitome of skill right there. That was a massive queen charge. And now we'll see if that puts Navi in the lead. Here comes Timtastic for Chazmac Gaming. He has a queen charge into Lalo. He's got baby dragons. Decided, oh, he has not used the power potion. He has not used the hero potion. And with the new update just dropping level, or yesterday, the new levels could be the difference of the attack here. If he decides he wants to use one, he decides not to. Once the battle starts, you cannot use them. So it looks like he'll start it with a blimp to sail it from the very bottom of the base. They're dropping out Rock of Blues, but stands right into a tornado trap. That's not a good design, but he does take the multi for down. And the baby dragon breaks the ring of trash on the outside of the base there. So he got his primary targets down. And on top of that, he pre-triggered the Rage Tower. And with the update, increasing the reset time by 20 seconds for Rage Towers, that new potion will start to come up out of the ground, but he potentially could get over to the Town Hall before it resets. So the pacing here may decide whether he has enough to get through that area or not. But a little bit more wiggle room than in the past. He's to get his push in that area going soon. Wait, I see... Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see the Queen Charge up at the top here. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you'll have to find a different way to secure the Talon Takedown because apparently there's a Queen Charge moving to the top of the base. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just here. Uh, <laughs> we have the Queen going to take the Eagle Artillery, and it's a good thing she got that down right there because it was about to be firing off some rage shots there, and when the Queen is setting so close to it, if she was inside the middle range, then it could have taken a shot at her healers while he was fighting the ice gloom. So it is absolutely critical that the queen was able to take that eagle artillery down before she switched over and had to fight the CC. So now he's safe. And look at the position of the sweeper here. The queen's gonna have to loop around the walls here. And the angle that she would approach at would normally put her healers into danger here. But they, as soon as they get targeted by the multi, they get knocked back and then they end up getting protected. But they get knocked back into red air bombs, so there might be more up there. We see one, they're gonna see more, and there's some more right there. How many are there gonna be? Is it gonna be enough to take the Queen's healers down, or are we gonna see this Queen continue to charge forward? Here comes a Lalo, into the Town Hall, but very late in the attack. Remember that Rage Tower has reset now. Obviously, 20 seconds added to the reset timer with the update is not gonna stop it from resetting with that much time. It given to work but the queen is going to go to auto ability from the monolith and that ultimately protects the world champion as she made her way forward throwing his, one of his freezes on the back side there to go pick up that air defense there he's got more freezes though but he is taking a lot of damage from the talent poison they want to maintain, if they want to maintain their lead here he absolutely must triple right here but he's taking so much damage from the town hall poison the queen wraps around time Watch the clock. He's got 20 seconds to close it out. Blues is still moving, but this right side wizard tower is going to kill a lot of his cleanup. That's going to cost him a lot of time here. He does find a little bit of safety. He goes north to the storage. The queen's circling in. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. Keep moving. He's got to get this. He's got to get the wizard tower down. Queen can reach it. She goes directly to it, but no. The storage. Stay standing. And with that. It is a one-star lead into Navi's favor. However, the total destruction, the percentage, is in the favor of Chazmac Gaming by 10 buildings. Good luck. And here we go. And we can end this right now. It decide this war. Oh my god, he's doing witches. He's doing witches. The war's on the line. Kazuma's breaking out. Zap. Invisibility, witches, super Valkyries? What the heck is this? Okay, this is a very, very bizarre army. But he does try to zap out the Eagle Artillery and he ended up missing it. The Battle Builders 
inside of the rage tower that got activated ultimately saved it or did he did he bring enough lightning to take it down i think he ended up missing it there i think that's a problem because the eagle artillery striking in groups of witches can be absolutely devastating he drops in a super minion bomb a super minion bomb secures the town hall takedown we get that multi as well it got neither multi oh no this is not going kazuma's way right now that means that we're still sitting on three multi infernos and the eagle artillery as he begins a path into the base here with 10 witches the lower the percentage lands the lower the bar would be set here for Chazmat Gaming. No, wait. I take that back. I take that all back. Because Navi went into this with a percentage disadvantage. And Chazmat needed a triple tie at the stars regardless. I don't think this is going to have a chance to go through at this point. Too much has gone wrong. I think he had us all a chance of getting this. If he would have got the super means to take their value and the eagle artillery wasn't beating down on the whole time. This had potential. It really did. It all comes out of this. This decides it all. This decides the winner of the show match. And it does look like... Oh, look at this. Look at this. Cloned Electrode? Electrode? Have you ever seen Electrode at Town Hall 15? He drops out. Electro Dragons and Clone out of the blimp secures the Town Hall takedown and we'll use that as a funneling point here for I guess two healers and Valkyries <laughs> Okay, he's, he's he's showing off here. He's showing off. He's gonna take an RB that we have Never seen we've never seen this kind of a mix but then again, anything can happen here with this new update and everybody is refining the balance of the game. But well, Wolf Shears will drive his two healers, the golems and his heroes around the bottom of the base here. That multi inferno is gonna deal damage a significant amount of the way through. He does have a rage tower that's not activated in the core of the base there, so about to boost the damage of everything in the area, but he pops the word ability as the Eagle Artillery Strikes come in, and there's the activation of the Rage Tower. The damage is going to be boosted significantly. We'll see if he can survive through here. He did have, he does have an Apprentice Warden, which is working with the Golems and the Electro Titans and the Heroes and boosting their HP massively there. Remember that the Apprentice Warden does not have a cap like the regular Warden does on how, on how much HP that it can add to a troop. So it is going to be much more impactful when you're deployed with heavy, heavy troops. So put it with the King and the Queen, and the Warden obviously does a lot to help you out here, but doesn't think it passes the defensive Queen. Starting to slow down. The Valkyries ended up dying out. This is not looking too hot right now. Looks like he's going to fall short of the defensive queen. His heroes at the core of the base there do not have the punch. And there it is. It is going to be a win for Navi. As Chazmak not able to get the Valkyries through the base. And this one will rack into the high 70s or low 80s. But it is not going to reach the mark necessary. And that means that Navi wins this show match. And guys, this is just the launch of the Golden Heart Cup. All the biggest name teams in Clash of Clans Esports are gonna be participating in this and it's gonna be another big tournament that we will be we'll be keeping a very close eye on. But Navi definitely had some cool attacks today. I, I think the coolest attack was the opening one with the Golem Avalanche.